Without further ado, I got Kapow Events Management here again. Sorry, did, did you see me, Shannon? I did it again. You know, I love uh, doing that. But this time, it's not Shannon. It is the lovely Paul who's with me here. Who the is less lovely Paul. <laughs> uh, Paul will be talking about event technology for small events and the non-meeting planner. So over to you, Paul. Good luck. Thank you very much. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining my session, Event Technology for Small Events and the Non-Meeting Planner. My name is Paul Mears, and my plan is to share with you my perspective on event technology for small events. Perspective is the operative word, because I don't believe I'm an authority on the topic. If you read my bio, you saw some baseball, transportation, destination management, and now small meeting solutions with our Kapow business. I'm still somewhat working in all of these things, and it's clearly not a technology-centric career. Don't let the Georgia Tech degree fool you. I was there for the baseball, and I managed to get a degree while I was there. So let's define small events, since it's a critical qualifier in the title of the session. And it can mean something a little different to everyone. For me, and I think for most of the industry, people distinguish meetings and events by orient orienting meetings as the collection of multiple events over a full day or multiple days. So when I talk about events, I'm looking at the meetings and events ecosystem in this way. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but the idea is that, at least from this perspective, we're orienting meetings in sort of three buckets. So one is the large complexity events that don't happen very often, annual conferences, incentives, expos, exhibitions, conventions, trade shows, things like that. Then there's the stuff in the middle that's maybe a little less complicated and happens a little more frequently, like symposiums, seminars, galas, fundraisers, forums. And then there's the small events that happen all of the time, a dinner event, happy hours, internal meetings, trainings, workshops, lunch and learns, road shows, a series of small events that happen all over the place. So for the purpose of this discussion, that's where we're focused, is these low complex events that happen frequently. We may not have captured everything here, but hopefully this orientation makes sense to you. Further, while there's no standard for defining a small event, or small meetings for that matter, for our purposes, and based on some planner survey data on their employer policies, we'll define small events as somewhere between 10 and 50 guests, $20,000 maximum spend, and an event that requires only one or two suppliers to execute, and no hotel room nights, since it's an event, not a meeting. So, a little bit about my perspective and where I came from. About 20 years ago, and with five years of destination management experience, I embarked on my first real technology development project for our destination management company, Hello Destination Management. Our goal was to build a client-facing, web-based tool that would, one, greatly improve our client's access to information, which we hoped, two, would shrink the time we invested in proposal creation. And together, the innovation would distance us from our competitors. Most destination management companies create tariffs and distribute them to their largest customers, which are usually third parties, who've made a significant revenue commitment to those DMCs. The tariff includes some guaranteed pricing for the whole year, a limited but credible, credible menu of popular services in each respective destination, like airport transfers, motor coach charters by the hour, off-site events, tours, activities, and the like. And each service includes a written description and images and the prices are provided for a few different guest count examples with minimal enhancements or options such as menus, entertainment, etc. The information is static in these tariffs that DMCs typically provide to their clients, so it only provides the planner with a basic understanding and pricing. However, many clients placed a big emphasis on the quality and the quantity of information provided in these tariffs and we're keen to get them as early as possible in the year. They claim the tool is valuable for quick and accurate responses to their clients without waiting on us for customized proposals. 
which they will ultimately seek when it's time to seriously plan for the typically complex event meetings and events which are designed and executed by destination management companies. We thought we had a great idea and the client demand for something better than the static tariff. So we built a really cool tool. Clients could log in, pick a destination, a service type, a guest count, and then get their detailed per person pricing, even add enhancements, and get total pricing and per person pricing on demand without contacting our local offices to request a proposal. When we toured the country and presented this technology to our high volume clients, their mouths dropped wide open. We made quite an impression. You're changing the industry. You're real innovators. This is going to be so helpful to us. And after all that promotion and bluster, when they needed something, they just sent us an email or gave us a call with whatever their request needed to be. Adoption was mild at best. As long as we were willing to be accessible, responsive, and more customized with our response than in the dynamic web turf, they'd just rather do it the old way. It turned out what they said they wanted, this massive importance they placed on the tariff and instant information wasn't so important at all. In the end, we leveraged the knowledge and gained that we gained, and we leveraged it in other ways, and it was a valuable marketing effort, but it did not accomplish our goals. Then about 10 years later, I came across kapow.com. They posted their tariff online for everyone to see, free. There was no required business commitment. And they were hiring destination management professionals all over the country to help grow the content on their website. Over time, I learned more about their business and my intrigue grew. In the summer of 2020, just as the pandemic was setting in, we bought Kapow from Cvent. We believed, and still believe, a small events technology and services firm is naturally adjacent to our destination management business, and it's an exciting new frontier. Just a note, this is not an advertisement for Kapow. It's just a large source of my knowledge, my experience there, so I'm gonna reference the business, what we've seen, where we've succeeded, where we've failed so far. So as we know, in recent years, there's been an industry recognition that small meetings and events make up a major portion of the meetings industry in terms of event count, expenditures, time consumption for planners and hosts. Now, I don't know if there are a lot more of these events today or they were always happening and just buried as part of the sales or administration costs and that awareness simply came along with the growth of in-house planning departments and the credibility of our standalone profession. Or meeting planning departments lobbied for control of these small events, the segment, to heighten their stature within organizations, which gave more visibility to small events and small events. Regardless of how it came about, there is certainly an awareness of small events volume within the meetings and event industry. So these are, this is not our sources. The sources here are the Event Industry Council, the Skift Travel Research, Amex GBT, GBTA, the Global Business Forecast. But here are some things that are going on, and, mo and many of these things you've heard somewhere. The meeting and event industry in America is valued at over $350 billion Small and simple events, what we're talking about here today in that category I described earlier, represents well over 50% of the expenditures. 25% increase in small and simple meetings in 2023. And then the, the, the cost is rising. And then this is stuff that I kind of laugh at because we, we've been hearing this as long as I've been in the industry. Lead time for events are shrinking. Meeting and event teams are being tasked to do more with less. You know, that's like gospel if you're in our industry. So with this big estimated $350 billion in North America alone, industry, this, and over 50% of that is small events, these small simple events, and almost all of the tasks associated with this are executed with universal technology like Excel and email and Word instead of a community or connective technology. So it's ripe for new efficiencies. In this environment, people will start to invest and innovate, right? Looking for market share and a return. But first, before we start investing, what problem are we trying to solve and for who? So in the description of the, this discussion, 
we mentioned these four areas that this industry is chasing. Staffing shortages and time management. You know, the truth is, they're really the same thing, right? It's about, it's about, it's about professional productivity and efficiency. Time management internally, staffing shortages, whether they're real or not, it's about personal productivity. Data capture, and then risk mitigation. These were the things that we mentioned. But within these broad categories, what are small event technologies specifically trying to improve for the rest of the users? So specifically, here are some areas that some of our colleagues here are trying to solve. Guest registration, event promotion, mobile apps, electronic interaction during the event, guest surveys, gifting, AV, food and beverage, data analysis and reporting, right? There's, there are, they're not limitless, but they're voluminous, right? The various challenges that these technologies are trying to solve. And who's trying to solve it? Who's out there trying to solve it? All under the title of small meetings and events, right? That's, that captures a lot of topics, and there are a lot of companies. By no means do these logos here on the screen represent the entire industry. Hell, it represents maybe 10% of the people in this room, right? But it's a, it's a representation of many who are out there chasing, trying to serve or solve for these problems that we mentioned in chasing market share. Each of them are chasing one or a few, maybe together, of those topics I mentioned before. And some of them are succeeding, meaning they're gaining customers at a rapid rate, they maybe have a clear path to profitability, maybe even a few are profitable already, yet most are not profitable. We're all still trying to figure it out in this emerging industry. While I can't be sure, part of the problem for our success or lack of success and why we're still chasing it is that it may be that the client isn't exactly sure what's most important to them. The exception to that, of course, is hotel sourcing, such as Cvent for meetings, not just small events, but that seems to have found its ground. It was a clear problem that people were trying to solve, and it's been solved, not perfectly, I don't think, but it, can, it has been solved, and there is value out there. So rather than delivering a solution to a clear problem, are some of us trying to create a market offer something that has real value, yet the market isn't really screaming for it. It's not really a priority for our prospective clients. And if it's not a priority for leadership of large companies who host hundreds or even thousands of these events each year, how does a solution with the stated benefits get funded? Let's go back to the larger buckets of problem areas. Staffing shortages and time management, we put them together. It's about productivity and efficiency data capture, risk mitigation, and I've added one here, cost savings for the actual event deliverables. So I'll explain this one, but let's address them one by one. Staffing shortages and time management. Efficiency is important and companies do not want to add headcount, especially in support areas. So a tool with great content for sourcing small events should be an opportunity for small events technology firms to exploit. Yet companies only see headcount growth to accommodate small events if they are charging their planning departments with producing these small events. But most companies allow their executive assistants or their sales representatives to book their own events. So it's really hard to see the time spent in the increased headcount. It's buried in the rest of the business. How big is this problem? Do these enterprises even want to know how big it is? Data capture. Which data? Do they, we want to we capture expense. We want to catch expense by product area. Which clients and prospects are soaking up resources? Which type of events are most successful? These things together allow an ROI, a return on investment measurement. Where customers involved internally, it's a little harder. And the data can greatly assist with compliance as well. Yet how important is this to large companies? Do they believe access to this data will improve ROI in the sales and marketing efforts? Or are they just dinners and lunch and learns that have to happen and the cost is what it is? The third, risk mitigation. 
Um, per Cvent white paper, removing contract signing authority from non-professional planners to limit damages is considered by many practitioners a bedrock best practice of strategic meetings management, or SMM. In other words, risk mitigation is expected. They expect that from their small meetings firms. And it's logical that a small events technology firm be part of an SMM program. But so much of an SMM program is hotel and transportation spend. Big buckets with somewhat standardized agreements. So let's make a blasphemous statement. Let me, not you, let me make a blasphemous statement at a technology conference. For small events, it seems far less likely that this can be solved with technology because there are so many different suppliers and supplier types. I don't think there's a technology so significantly developed to improve efficiency with thousands of unique suppliers and their respective agreements. The decision for a small events firm is to take on the risk, to be the merchant of record and allocate the resources to negotiate with all of the suppliers and all of their unique agreements, or the firm can decide not to include it in their value proposition and act only as an agent. Imposing a standard agreement to all, against all of your suppliers or on all of your suppliers is easy to say, but it's much harder to do unless you're channeling a lot of volume to your suppliers. This benefit may be less about leveraging technology. The benefit of risk mitigation for your clients may be less about leveraging technology and more about outsourcing and part of a bundled service. Savings and deliverables for the last one, those actual deliverables and create giving savings to your client. This one wasn't mentioned in the description, but oh yeah, now we have something big that we can measure, something that's already visible, right? They can see that they're buying dinners, that they're buying entertainment, that they're buying things for this client entertainment. And this might be a way, if there's this big spend, to fund the three other benefits that our prospective clients want. Also, a bedrock of strategic meetings management is tracking expenditures so you can channel your buying and negotiate better pricing with your supplier. The problem with those small events firms employing this approach, which includes us here at Capal and many others on that list I showed earlier, is that while in the aggregate, the dollars spent on these small events are large, they are small for each supplier that you're buying them from. Remember what the product is and what the small event is. It's a dinner for about 25 people and it averages about 7,500 bucks. And there are thousands and thousands of restaurants and, venue, and venues available to host these events and even thousands in a single city. And those hosts want to try new things as long as they're great, of course, so it's very difficult to channel spend against these venues in order to negotiate discounts that can be passed on to the client as well as generate the margin to fund the technology for the partner. Here's the challenge for many of us. Do we focus on the time savings for our clients and data capture, plus throw in the risk mitigation and simply charge a fee for these services outright, subscription as a service, technology investors love that, or do we throw in the events deliverables themselves, venues, food and beverage, entertainment, AV, gifting, and try to subsidize the cost of our added value through negotiated discounts of these costs of goods sold? This is also a note from Cvent. While cost savings through better negotiations are an opportunity, the benefits of managing small, simple meetings extend far beyond dollars saved. I agree. But so far, it feels like we're going to have to convince our prospective customers and all of their stakeholders because they're very focused on how much are you going to save me on my event spend. So one additional factor to consider. Let's assume that with enough research, technology investment, supplier negotiations, and content building, we can build a fantastic small events technology solution that will deliver enough value in the areas of planner, time savings, when sourcing data capture for ROI and better decision making and risk mitigation, that we can do all of that. And that companies are willing to pay a large enough premium to sustain, sustain a small events technology company. 
even if we get all of that done for the client, remember the client is the enterprise and they want these things, risk mitigation, data capture, some cost savings, those are things that the enterprise wants. If we get all of that done, then our small events firm still must deliver a fantastic user experience to the planner and the non-planner host, along with a great guest experience. After all of this, we can't lose sight of the fact that we have to deliver a great guest experience. And they're not having, excuse me, these hosts, these buyers, these bookers, they're not buying a dress and shoes on Amazon. They are hosting an event. They have a vision. They have expectations. They are emotionally connected. And they want to know this event is going to be great. They can't give it back if it doesn't meet expectations. Our experience at Kapow is that planners want to converse with somebody who can answer their questions and explore the nuances that may not be unique, but are certainly abundant, and thus far, they're not fully automated. So how much does a small events technology firm automate or accommodate via professional services or leave unserved? I think these questions are yet to be settled but they are part of the problem being pursued by small events technology firms like us. Because if the leader of a large company that hosts hundreds of events each year and therefore seeks the benefits we've discussed, chooses to mandate a solution, which in my opinion will be required to receive the full benefits, they better do it with a solution that the users love or at least like, or there will be a revolt among their worker base. Is the events industry large enough? I think so. Can technology deliver enough real efficiencies, valuable data, and possible pricing benefits to solve the small events headache for large companies? I think so. I firmly believe that the combination of these benefits is worth a small cost premium for executing a small events program for large enterprises. But I don't think it will catch fire like some technologies. The pilot light is that some large firms are getting started with at least part of the solution for part of a problem. If they gain confidence, they will ultimately receive the real benefits when they fully embrace a policy solution or a mandate paired with a to be named later small events technology firm that delivers the optimum mix of technology, content, and service, and therefore overall value to their firm. So that's enough of me talking. Are there any questions? Hello, Heidi. Thank you so much, Paul. Any questions? All right, if nothing formal, I'll stick around and we can talk on the side. Thank you.